afternoon, members. It is now 2.30 p.m. That is our scheduled start time. We have also formed a quorum, so I call the meeting of the House Committee to order. Item 1, confirmation of verbatim transcript in minutes of meetings. Today, we have got three such um, transcript and minutes. First of all, verbatim transcript of the 24th meeting held on the 24th of May 2019. The second one, minutes of the 25th meeting held on the 31st of May 2019. And thirdly, minutes of the 26th meeting held on the 14th of June 2019. Uh, well, prior to the commencement of the meeting, the Secretariat hasn't received any comments from members concerning the verbatim transcript as well as the two sets of minutes. I'd like to invite you to confirm the three sets of verbatim transcript or minutes of our meetings. All right, confirmed. Item 2, matters arising. The 7th of June, Friday, was a public holiday. We didn't have a House Committee meeting. As to the 14th of June at that meeting, we were not able to have any discussion of substantive items. For the House Committee meeting on the 21st of June, it was cancelled. Therefore, for the past three weeks, we haven't had any uh, meetings with the CS4A to refer your views to him. So I haven't got anything to report to you. Item 3. Legis uh, Legal Service Division Report on Subsidiary Legislation Gazetted on the 31st of May 2019. I would like to invite the legal advisor to give us a briefing. Thank you, Madam Chair. Please find our report in paper LS 74 18 to 19. It covers one item of subsidiary legislation. LN 81. The purpose is to implement the latest uh, sanctions imposed by the UN on the Central African Republic. you find the details in paragraph 3. In accordance with the UNSC or, uh, UNS ordinance, um, there's no need to um, table the Subsidiary legislation is not subject to amendment by the LegCo. Perhaps we may want to refer it to the subcommittee to examine the implementation of Hong Kong of the resolutions of the UN Security Council in relation to sanctions. I've got nothing else to report. So, members, would you agree that we follow our convention? That is, we refer the matter to the subcommittee to examine the implementation of Hong Kong resolutions of the UNSC in relation to sanctions. Any comments? No, then that will be referred to the subcommittee. Item 4. The Chief Executive's Question Time on the 3rd of July 2019. It will take place between 11 and 11.30 a.m. For the regular Legislative Council meeting, it will take place immediately after the end of the CE's Question Time. Item 5. Yes, Mr. Lam Chuk Ting. Madam Chair, I would like to urge you to take up this matter with the CS4A. The CE's uh, question time was cancelled. Uh, well, this is the first time that she's coming to the legislature after the two protests with one million and two million uh, participants, respectively. I hope she won't be cancelling the very important question time. Mr. Lang Yu-chong, testing. Madam Chair. I would also like to follow up on what Mr. Lam has said. Well, last time, with short notice, the CE's question time was cancelled. So today, it is said that she is coming. Will it be cancelled at the end? And if it is to be cancelled, what about the notice to be given? How short would it be? We have to prepare for the questions. Mr. Ray Chen, Madam Chair, for this question time, is it a substitute for the one cancelled last time, or is it one of those already scheduled? I would like to say that if she's going to cancel it, then she better not come altogether in future. Members would like the CE to try her best to attend this question time. When I meet with the CS4A, this will be reflected to him. Secondly, 
for the sixth question time scheduled for the third of July, twenty nineteen, uh, is the regular uh, question time. So it's not a substitute, Madam Chair. Would it be cancelled? Then it is a matter for the president of the LegCo to make a decision. This is because meeting arrangements are to be carried out. Uh, According to the rules of procedure and decided by the president, uh, Secretary, can you confirm this is the correct understanding? Who else would like to speak, Miss Claudia Mo? Well, I just want to pick up the point made by Ray Chen. Last time, you see, it didn't come she, because she was afraid. But then, uh, according to the press report, I think it was the Hong Kong Economic Journal. She has been uh, asked by the central authorities to stay at the government house so that uh, there was no need for her to go to the C's office to carry out her work. So she has been grounded. She has been kept there, and that's why she couldn't come. Well, if that is to be the case, I hope that by the 2nd of July, she should, ha she should tell us whether she's coming or not. All right, her uh, point taken, noted. Item 5, Business of, for the Council Meeting of the 3rd of July 2019 Questions. On that day for our meeting, we have arranged for 22 questions to take place, 6 oral questions, 16 written. B. Bill, first reading and moving of second reading. Mandatory Provident Fund Schemes Amendment Bill 2019. On the 5th of July, the House Committee uh, will deal with it at our meeting. C. Government motion. So far, we haven't received any notice. D. Members' motions. Motions under the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance to appoint a select committee to conduct an inquiry. First motion to be moved by Honourable Andrew Wen. Second motion to be moved by Honourable Jeremy Tam. The wording of the motions uh, has already been issued to you via a legal paper. In addition, at the same meeting, we are going to deal with the other members' motions stood over from previous meetings. Item 6, business for the council meeting of the 10th of July 2019. A questions. 22 questions have been arranged, including 6 oral and 16 written questions. B. Bill. No notice has been received yet. C. Bills. Resumption of debate on second reading consideration by Committee of the Whole Council and third reading. First, Judicial Officers Extension of Retirement Age Amendment Bill 2019. Second, Electoral Legislation Miscellaneous Amendments Bill 2019. B. Government Motions. Two proposed resolutions will to be moved by the Chief Secretary for Administration under Article 737 of the Basic Law and Section 7A of the Hong Kong Court of Final Appeal Ordinance, Cap 484. The relevant subcommittee scrutinizing the two proposed resolutions has already prepared a report and it has been sent out to members earlier on. On the 21st of June, the Secretariat sent a paper to inform members of that and to consult members of the views. Members do not object to the notice to be made by the, uh, to be given by the administration to move the two proposed resolutions. If you would like to move amendments, the deadline will be Saturday, the 29th of June. E. Members' Bill. First reading and moving of second reading. St. John's College Amendment Bill 2019. Um, we are going to deal with it um, in the last meeting of the current session to be held after the summer recess in October. This is a member's bill moved by Mr. Jimmy Ng. Uh, F. Members' motions. First, um, this is. Um, a motion under Basic Law, Article 73, 5 and 10, so as to summon persons to produce documents and to give evidence. That's to be moved by KK Kwok. Second, a motion to be moved under the Legal Powers and Privileges Ordinance to appoint a select committee uh, to be moved by Mr. Aung Nok Hin. Again, the wording has been sent out to members via a earlier paper. Mr. Ray Chen. Yes, Madam Chair, I would like to make an inquiry. Earlier on, in accordance with the Legal Commission Ordinance, Section 17, Bracket 2, I have sent in a motion. 
that is, uh, we should suspend the duties of the Secretary General, Kenneth Chen, so as to and also to set up a select committee to see whether there has been any negligence of duty. I want to know how this has been handled. Uh, I would like to have it on the 10th of July. Mr. Chen, other than you, other members have also uh, proposed motions that are being dealt with by the president. We have yet to get the approval from the president, and that's why it hasn't been included in today's agenda. You may want to make inquiries with the uh, President, if you would like to uh, make amendments, you have until the 3rd of July, uh, Wednesday, to give notice. At the same meeting, we are going to deal with two other members' motions without legislative effect stood over from previous meetings. And we have um, a list uh, of subsidiary legislation. And it has been tabled, and that's for the arbitration appointment of arbitrators and mediators and decision on number of arbitrators amendment rules 2019. The reference subcommittee will provide a report to us uh, after under uh, item 7F. Just want to remind members that if you would like to speak uh, on that matter, please do so. Um, please give us the notice by 5 p.m. on the 2nd of July. Item 7, Reports of Bills Committees and Subcommittees. First report of the Bills Committee on National Anthem Bill. Uh, please note that the Secretary for Constitutional and Mainland Affairs wrote to us on the 19th of June, saying that the administration intends to resume the second reading debate in the following uh, legislative session. I would like to give the floor to Mr. Martin Liao, Chair of the Bills Committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. The purpose of the National Anthem Bill is to provide for the singing and playing of the National Anthem, the protection of the National Anthem, and the promotion of the National Anthem. The deliberations of the BC are detailed in our written report. The Bills Committee held 17 meetings with the administration and received views from the public. 14 members submitted a total of 40 plus CSAs for the consideration of the Bills Committee. The CSAs proposed have been annexed to the report of the BC, and the administration has responded in writing. No CSAs will be moved in the name of the Bills Committee. The administration will not propose any amendments. At the final meeting of the BC, some members objected to the resumption of the second reading debate of the bill. A vote was taken upon my instruction. The result was 27 members were in favour, while 12 objected to the resumption. In accordance with the voting result, the Bills Committee supports the resumption of the second reading debate of the bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you, Mr. Liu. Um, I would like to consult your views in relation to the administration's plan to resume the second reading debate in the coming legislative con uh, session. Claudia Mo. I want to know about the text. Um, well, Andrew Wong uh, has enlightened us. If you would like to retract it or if you would like to postpone it uh, we or withdraw it, I think you better be clear about the wording. So is it a matter of postponement? I've received a letter and it's been sent out to you. Please tell us. I haven't got it with me. You can look up the letter from the SCMA. In other words, you have forgotten it. That's not true. Then you better tell us. My understanding is that the Secretary has promised in his letter that in the coming session upon uh, resumption of our business, then the resumption of the second reading debate will take place. So is it a matter of postponement or withdrawal? Madam Chair, well, for the letter from the SCMA, uh, please uh, read the last paragraph. It is said that the administration would like to resume uh, please uh, go on. The final paragraph, the Secretary has made the point that the administration would like to resume the second reading debate of the bill uh, in the coming session. 
and the date will be notified in due course. So they did not say whether it is postponement or withdrawal. So in your next meeting with the CS4A, please ask the secretary clearly now for uh, handling of the uh, national anthem bill. Uh, the administration avoided using terms like proposement or um, postponement or withdrawal, and that's very clever. But for the fugitive offenders bill, uh, the term used was a uh, suspension. So the situation is far from clear, and uh, Johnny cannot give us an exact answer. So you should ask the CS for A to come out. Priscilla Lung, you think you are the CS for A? Your view is very clear, Miss Mo. I can only uh, put it on uh, the agenda in my meeting with the CS for A. Yes, when you and Dennis Kwok meet with him. Yes, uh, that will be on the agenda of our meeting. And as for the secretary's letter, has been sent to members earlier on. If members have no further views, we go on to B, report of the subcommittee on members' remuneration and operating expenses, reimbursement on review of members' remuneration and operating expenses, reimbursement. I'd like to invite Mr. Wong Ting Kwong, chairman of the subcommittee, to speak. Thank you, Madam Chair. On the Review of members' remuneration and operating expenses reimbursement for the new term of the council. In April last year and February this year, we consulted uh, all members of the council through a survey to collect relevant information and seek views from all members. Based on the outcome of the two surveys, the majority of the members supported a proposal to adopt a weighted index as the basis for any adjustment of members OOEL. The subcommittee recommends that the administration should be invited to consider the proposal. The proposal is to use the weighted index which comprise three main components of OOEL, namely salary expenses, which will be adjusted with reference to civil service pay adjustment, and two, office accommodation, which will be adjusted with reference to the rental index for Gracie offices published by the Rating and Valuation Department, and three, other operating expenses, which will be adjusted with reference to Composite Consumer Price Index. The subcommittee also agrees that the information obtained in the surveys and individual members' views should be relayed to the administration for consideration. For details, please refer to parts 2 and 3 of the report. We invite the House Committee to note the findings and recommendation in the report and agree to forward the report to the administration for consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wong. So, members, please first note the uh, survey findings and recommendation in the report. And second, uh, please agree to forward this report to the administration for consideration by the independent commission. If uh, there are no strong views, then uh, we will do as stated. See the uh, report of the subcommittee on entertainment special effects fees amendment regulation 2019. Mr. Ma Feng Guang. Thank you, Madam Chair. This subcommittee has completed the deliberation of the entertainment special effects fees amendment regulation 2019, which seeks to raise the fees payable for the following 26 items. A. The issue renewal certification, replacement or alteration of any license or permit under the Entertainment Special Effects Ordinance or the Entertainment Special Effects General Regulation and b any examination or assessment that may be required for the issue or alteration of licenses under the above mentioned ordinance or regulation. The revisions will be implemented on the 1st of July 2019. The subcommittee held one meeting with the sub 
uh, with the administration to discuss the amendments to the regulation. Members were concerned whether full recovery of costs can be achieved upon introduction of the revisions. Given the administration's policy to promote and support the development of the local film industry, members wondered if the fees should be lowered or fully subsidized by the administration. Members also commented on the issuing of permits for staging performances with pyrotechnic special effects. Our discussion was detailed in the subcommittee's report. Thank you. The report of the Subcommittee on Telecommunications Method for Determining Spectrum Utilization Fee, Spectrum for Auction Regulation and Telecommunications Destination of Frequency Band Subject to Payment of Spectrum Utilization Fee, Amendment Order 2019. I'll invite Dr. Elizabeth Quat, Chairman of the Subcommittee, to speak. Thank you. The Subcommittee has completed uh, the scrutiny of the telecommunications method for determining spectrum utilization fee, spectrum for auction regulation and telecommunications destination of frequency bands subject to payment of spectrum utilization fee amendment order 2019. The rules will allow the government to designate three additional frequency bands by means of auction to provide five uh, fifth generation mobile services. The subcommittee had one meeting with the administration to discuss the me the rules. Members are concerned that to avoid interferences to operation of tel satellite operations, uh, mobile network operators will not be able to use the 5.5 gigahertz band in two restriction zones in Taipo and Stanley. Members have asked the administration to consider relocating these telemetry tracking and control stations in the restricted zones so that uh, 5G services will not be restricted. Members have also urged the administration to keep the spectrum auction fee reserve prices low so that high costs will not be passed on to end users. Details can be found in the report. Thank you. Gaolin. The report of the Subcommittee on Financial Reporting Council Amendment Ordinance 2019 Commencement Notice. Mr. Wang Teng Kuang, Chair of the Subcommittee, please speak. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Financial Reporting Council Amendment Ordinance 2019 Commencement Notice seeks to appoint the day on which the Financial Reporting Council Amendment Ordinance 2019 comes into operation. The subcommittee held one meeting with the administration to scrutinize the notice. Members do not object to the notice. The main issues discussed were first proposed guidelines on pecuniary penalty in sanctions on auditors of property interest entities or registered responsible persons of a registered PIE auditor for misconduct. Second, the interpretation of the auditing standards when the authority enforces the law. And third, making reference to past decisions when penalties are imposed. Members are invited to note the deliberation of the subcommittee detailed in our report. Thank you. F. Reports of the Subcommittee on Arbitration, Appointments of Arbitrators and Mediators and Decision on Number of Arbitrators, Amendment, Rules 2019. I'd like to invite Dr. Priscilla Long, Chairman of the Subcommittee, to speak. Dr. Priscilla Long. Madam Chair, the arbitration appointment of arbitrators and mediators and decision on number of arbitrators amendment rules 2019 or the rules are intended to reduce costs of a party to seek an appointment or a decision of Hong Kong International Arbitration Center or HKIAC in low value arbitrations seated in Hong Kong and to streamline the process for HKIAC to exercise its functions under CAP 609. The subcommittee has held two meetings and invited representatives from HKIAC to discuss the rules with members at the second meeting. Some members are concerned as to how the discretionary waiver of $8,000 for exercising any of HKIAC's functions as the default appointing authority could benefit Hong Kong as an international arbitration center and how the rules may benefit maritime arbitration in Hong Kong being promoted by the government. The rules grant 
HKIAC the express power to amend any of its time limits for the parties to provide comments and information. Some members are concerned about this uh, and or whether this can lead to abuse. The HKIAC has responded to these concerns and queries at the meeting. The subcommittee has consulted relevant bodies and note HKIAC's responses to the submission made by the Hong Kong Institute of Architects regarding the rules and raised no further views. The subcommittee has completed its scrutiny work and has no objection to the rules and we will not make any amendment. For details of our deliberations, please refer to the report to the House Committee. Thank you, Dr. Lau. Uh, the deadline for scrutiny of the rules would expire on the 10th of July. If members would like to move amendments, the deadline for giving notice is the 7th or the 3rd of uh, July. Next is position on bills committees and subcommittees. As at the 27th of June, Thursday, we have 10 bills committees in action. One BC will have to work uh, beyond the three months since its commencement of work. And there are six subcommittees under the HC and seven subcommittees for uh, policy issues under panels. There are five on the waiting list. Oh. Item 9, Proposed Duty Visit to Finland by the Panel on Education. I'd like to invite Mr. Yip Gin Jun, Chairman of the Panel, to speak. Mr. Yip, Madam Chair, on behalf of the Panel on Education, we'd like to seek the House Committee's permission for the panel to conduct an overseas duty visit to Finland in September this year to understand the education system there. The details and the estimate of expenditure are attached to the paper. Uh, the duty visit is open to all technical members. So far, 10 members have indicated their interest, among whom two are non-panel members. The name list is attached to the paper in Appendix 2. I would like to invite the House Committee to approve our proposal to carry out a duty visit. All right, uh, members are invited to uh, grant permission. Members, any views? No? Then we agree to the proposal. Item 10, AOB. We haven't got anything under AOB. So for today's meeting, that's it. Thank you.